Okay, in this video, we're gonna learn how to make a POST request. So we've got uh, a message instance using a GET. Now we're gonna create a new message using a POST, and we're gonna see how to do that using the JAXRS client. Okay, so what do you think would be the web target for a POST request here? We know that the POST request for messages should go to the root context slash messages, which is our messages target here. So I'm gonna use this web target to create a new message by making a POST request. So let's do that. I'm gonna create a new message over here. as a new message. And I'm gonna use the convenience constructor over here to create an ID. Let's call it uh, for my new message from JAXRS client. And uh, what do we have here? The author, which is gonna be myself. I'll have a new message over here. Now I can actually make a post request with this message and create it. So I'm gonna use the messages target, okay? So it the way it works is very similar to this, right? So I'm gonna use the messages target to get hold of the web target. I don't have to do a resolve template over here because there are no variable portions, at least until over here. The variable portion is only in this level. We are using this one. So I've got the target. Now I can do a request, right? So I'm gonna do dot request. So I prepare a request. I don't really care about the media type over here, the accept header, it doesn't matter. Now I can do a post. So we looked at a get method. Let's try a post. So you see here, there's a post which takes in an entity as an argument. So I'm gonna do a post of new message. Now, as you can see here, we've got an error. The post expects an object of type entity. What we are sending is an object of type message. So we need to convert this message instance into an entity instance. So this is the way the JAXRS API is designed. So the way to convert this is by basically wrapping this instance up into an entity. So if you remember, we got a response object as a wrapper for what we actually were interested in when we made a get request, right? So we got a message.class. We didn't actually get message.class. We got a wrapper and we had to do a response dot read entity. So similarly, when you're sending something, you don't actually send just the message, you send a wrapper around that message. So there are some handy methods in the entity class. So if I do entity dot, and uh, let me import this, entity is from Java XWS RS client entity. Now here, you see there are a bunch of methods about what kind of content you wanna send. Do you wanna send HTML? Do you wanna send JSON, text, XML? This is how you convert your um, message instance to this JSON wrapper. So I'm gonna do a JSON, and then I'm gonna pass in what it is that I actually wanna send. All right, now this is gonna give me, let me put it into a new local variable here. This is a post response. Okay. Now I'm like, I can actually do, let me remove these other system dot outs. So I'm gonna do a sys out of post response. All right, so what are we doing here? We're doing the same thing that we did for a get, but here, since it's a post, we need to send the object to the post request. So we cannot just send the object itself. We need to convert it into an XML or a JSON or any of those content types you've already seen. That's how it works, right? If you're using Postman, you don't send a Java instance. You send a representation, you send XML or JSON. This is the way you convert your Java instance to JSON. So entity is the class that we are using. It has a few handy methods for different content types that we are sending. Uh, let's run it. You're not gonna get anything useful in the response, but I'm gonna show this anyway. You see this? We get inbound JAXRS response like we did before. Okay, you see we get a status 201 and we got created, but we need to unwrap this response. Read entity again. We know that we're getting a message back, so I'm gonna do message dot class. And I'm gonna take this out actually so that I get 
more details about the message and create a new local variable, call it created message, created message dot get message. All right, let's run this. And there is our newly created message echoed back. All right, so this is how you would make a post request to create a new message. Doing a put request to update an existing message is fairly similar. Here, rather than doing a messages target dot request dot post, what you would do is a single message target dot resolve template of your message that you want to update dot request dot put. You would still do an entity dot JSON of the object that you're trying to update. What needs to go in the request body, you need to choose the content type for it, right? So this is what this thing does. All right, so there's one thing that we saw when we did this that I want to highlight. When you get a response, you notice you got a 201 status, right? But when you do a message, uh, you know, response dot read entity of message and you get the actual message, you've basically unwrapped that response object and got the entity out of it. Once you get this, you don't have the response status anymore, right? So the response wrapper is there for a reason. It has more information about the response that you got back from the server, the most important of which, in my opinion, is the status code. So think about something like this. Once you do a post response, right? Once you get a post response after you make a request, you could actually examine the response status code and based on the status, you could do a read entity and get the actual entity or throw an error. For instance, you could do something like this. If post response, get status is not equal to 201, then you can do a sys out. I'm just gonna print an error here, but you can imagine some kind of an error handling that happens over here, right? So this is very important for checking if what you sent was actually updated successfully or not, right? So it's a very good way of checking it. And if you see some of the other methods over here in the post response object, you have access to things like cookies, you have access to things like headers. So the response object is a really cool way of getting that extra information that you don't get by just the entity. And that's actually one of the reasons why you would wanna do a get here rather than a get off the message dot class. If you remember, if I don't send in the class, what you get back is a response. And now, once you get hold of the response, you can actually examine the status, you can examine the headers, the cookies, and all that stuff. So that's that's really handy. All right, so I'm gonna just revert this back to what it was before. But uh, hopefully that made sense. There are different ways in which you can achieve a lot of things over here. A lot of these methods have multiple signatures. Uh, it's not gonna be practical for me to cover all these different combinations. But hopefully this gives you a good introduction. I encourage you to check out the documentation for a lot of these classes. They have some really good, uh, good documentation, really good method signatures over there that you can use in your projects.